So I've been making this recipe for probably almost a year. It's kind of something I came up with on my own. My family loves it. Hey now, take a step outside and seize the day now. Set aside your worries, it's so... Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you are new around here, I have been once a week, generally on Fridays, but don't hold me to it, um, doing a cook and clean with me and sharing some of my absolute favorite recipes and some new recipes, just having fun cooking in my kitchen and sharing with you guys. So today I'm gonna show you my chili recipe. And if you guys don't know this about me, I do eat a little bit on the low carb keto end of things. And so I've been making this recipe for probably almost a year. It's kind of something I came up with on my own. My family loves it and it's just really, really delicious. Today I am actually running short on time and I'm gonna make it in my pressure cooker, but you could easily do this on slow cook. I've done it that way a lot. I've done it in my Dutch oven or just in whatever pot you might have around. Either way, it's all the same ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what you need and then we'll get cooking. You're gonna need two pounds of ground beef. I have it in my sink down here. I'm not gonna bring it up here and make a big mess out of it. So it doesn't really matter whatever your favorite ground beef is. And then you're also going to need some zucchini. This is what I picked up. Sometimes it's a pack of three smaller ones, but roughly this amount of zucchini. Zucchini can be a little bit rough to measure or to kind of like guess because they come in so many different sizes, but this is about what you'll need. Next, you will need a whole onion and a whole pepper. And those are pretty much the veggies that are gonna go into this. This is a bean-free chili. So to hang with the low carb idea, there's no beans in this and we still love it so much so I challenge you to try it if you've never tried chili without beans so as far as the canned things that you'll need you will need a can of diced tomatoes this one is a 14.5 ounce can and then this is an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce so to spice it up, I've done a couple different things. I've added cayenne or paprika, but because I have little ones and tonight they're gonna be joining us in eating the chili, I'm going to just have this on the side. It's some hot sauce. My husband and I can dump this into our chili to spice it up because we both love it really spicy. And um, then the rest of it will be a little more mild so that our three daughters can eat it as well. So the next thing that you'll need is some salt and pepper. And you'll also need some chili powder, onion powder, and garlic powder. And then the only other thing that you're gonna wanna have is a little bit of oil or butter to stir fry the veggies before we get everything else started. I'm gonna chop up the veggies and pull out my pressure cooker. All right, so I started out by putting a little bit of oil into my pressure cooker and putting it on the saute setting so that I could saute the veggies and the meat right in the bottom of the pressure cooker. It's so convenient. You don't need to make more pots and pans dirty. It's all done in one spot. And if I can find the link for this specific pressure cooker, I will leave it in the description box. I love it. It has so many different settings and it's worked so well for us. We love to even put ribs in it. <laughs> That's one of our favorite things to do in this cooker. And um, I just, yeah, I'm learning how to use it more and more every single week. Once the veggies were sauteed, um, kind of, I would say, halfway, not totally, um, I removed them and then I put the meat into the pressure cooker, again, still on the saute setting. Next, I selected the soup setting just to get it rolling and get the heat up. So I dumped everything, all the ingredients in before putting the lid on. Adding in the tomatoes, the tomato sauce, and then the spices. 
So I put two teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, and about a teaspoon of salt. And then you can add in black pepper at your own taste. Once the 25 minutes were up, I manually released the pressure. And there you have it, a great pot of soup and made so quickly and it tastes like it's been sitting all day long. And then a few things we like to add in is some shredded cheese and some sour cream. And you guys know the rule in my kitchen, unless I am trying to be in a big hurry and need to grab pre-shredded cheese, we love to shred our own cheese. And then a day or two later, I actually decided to pack up all of my fall things and get ready to decorate for Christmas. So my girls helped me take everything down and they had so much fun doing it. Looking up at a tree, I remember how it started. I was lost in a dream when the fire in my heart said an open rose. I've already found some light, the feeling grows. And anything sounds alright, I'm breaking loose. Living in the moment in my own. So besides the fall decor, I also packed up all of my greenery because it would be replaced with garlands and things for the holidays. And I put labels on my bins before I stored them in our attic. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of my subscribers beyond words. And let me know in the comments when you take down your fall decor. Is it before Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, right after Halloween? And when do you decorate for Christmas? Because I definitely am more on the early train with that because I put so much work into decorating for Christmas and I wanna enjoy it for as long as possible. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.